Hello, 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 and a very warm welcome, and thank you for joining us here at our darling Idube KZN race car track. We are here for the third of fourth rounds. This is the South African Rotax Max National Challenge. Uh, Rotax obviously being um, <laughs> owned by Ed Murray. Um, and we are here, there's four nationals a year, and this is our third. We started in Kalani down in Cape Town, then we went off to the Formula K track in Benoni in Joburg. And now here we are in sunny KZ in a beautiful winter day. T uh, Air temperatures are 12 to 21 degrees here in Camperdown. Um, not so much of a need for coffee this morning. Um, the, the atmosphere is buzzing. Uh, people are very excited to be at the track. Drivers love our Idube track. It's not the Formula K track that our, uh, let's get this right, CRK FIA regulations built. This is an old track. This is an abrasive track. It's full of twists and turns. It's not the fast and flowing course of Formula K. So let's take you through the Dubé track. It's going to be hot, it's going to be fierce and exciting out there. Um, setup is completely different to, to FK track. Um, we've only got two short straights here and the rest is all twists and turns. Check of a race day. Right, here we are. This is the premier class of Rotax Max Kart Racing. The DD2 and the DD2 Masters. Well, let's have a look. They said they qualified separately. It was the man who's been out of the seat for two years. Lee Morgan caught number 12, ran the fastest time in qualifying. A 43.258 from five times world champion Cristiano Molcado there. Ran a 43.415, two tenths difference in their times. And in the uh, Masters, it was Nick Verhell, Nick Verhell, who ran a 43.8, uh, and uh, 
uh, one tenth quicker than Jonathan Peterson uh, with a 43.9. That's the 101 cart and the 169. So we need to watch this as the flag drops and we are away racing. 15 laps are racing for the Premier Class. Hang on to your seats because this is going to be one busy trip. You see the staggered start. There's the Masters there waiting to get their start. Away they go. So the, the Bradley Limburg gets a nice clean advantage. Right, we're going to bring away there for a TV interview. We've been in a while. Right, here I am with Caleb Udendahl. He's a Minimax racer. And of course, Dad Udendahl as well. Uh, family affair, biggest fan. At big fan. Um, Caleb, you you were patient. This was heat one. You qualified two thousandths of a second behind Travis Minge and uh, Travis being a local boy, homeboy track. And you were patient and persistent and you reeled him in and then second to last lap, you took him on DT corner. Yeah, it must feel pretty good. <laughs> Caleb, uh, tell us about your race, heat one. It was good. In the beginning, I was in the start, I struggled a bit. In the so in the mid pack, I struggled to catch. Um, well, I was second, and throughout the race, I struggled to catch Travis. But at, through the end, I caught him. Do you think you got the right tire pressure? Yes, I do. Yeah, it's it's a hot, balmy day today, eh? Hey? Do you do that? It is. All right, and your tires just came on a little later, and you could just take the opportunity when it presented itself. Yes. Okay, I saw you f fist pumping there as you crossed the finish line. I don't know if you realize how close Trav was behind you then. We were all screaming in the stands. But congratulations. Are your, your confidence is up on this twisty, turny track? Yes, it is. Okay, so heat two, same thing, now that you're in P1 for heat two? Yes. Okay, awesome. Congratulations. Dad, any comments on your boy? No, just super proud. Um, it's a privilege to be able to be racing and uh, to be able to support him and uh, yeah, just super proud uh, with, his, with his pace that he's, that he's found. Uh, we, we had two months of uh, hard work that we've, that, we, that we've had to do. Um, but yeah, he's uh, still remained positive <laughs> and um, yeah, the, the team's been fantastic. We yeah. couldn't do it without them. And so is Caleb, very mature little driver this. Congratulations guys and we're going to go back to Lynn and he's going to be commentating on our next race. Thanks very much. Thank you. Right, here we are. We pick up all the, the racing in there. Let's have a look here with uh, 12 laps remaining in the DD2, DD2 Masters. First hit there. We see Brad Lindbergh leading overall. He's gone purple too with a 43.521. And, uh, well, it's a uh, 43.521. He's uh, running a best time in the race. And, well, he got down to a 43.258 and qualified yesterday to select that pole start for this uh, first hit here today. So uh, holding us the lead at the moment there is over Sebastian Boyd in the 69 car. Cristiano Morgado's dropped back to that third place. The five times world champion. He was two tenths off uh, Liebenberg's time yesterday in qualifying. And uh, clearly that uh, is not the pace that he wants. He'll be looking for more things here, ready, looking back over his shoulders. He's a worried man now. Has he got a problem with that cart? Is there something not right with that cart? Because he's already looking back now to see who else is going to come at him. So it's Liebenberg and Boyd right now. The gap from first to second. A half a second separating the two. Morgado in third. Joseph Holtz in fourth. Uh, Kian Grottis in that fifth place from Nico, Nico Zipadis, sixth. Nicholas Spanianos running in 7th, Brandon Smith in 8th, Waylon Wyman and Nicholas Vota running 10. Let's have a look at the Masters right now. It is uh, the 101 cart there of uh, Nicholas Verhale that leads, Jonathan Peterson 2nd and uh, Eugene Britz running in 3rd. Well, it's Eugene Brits that uh, is the, the championship leader right now in the Masters. And uh, at the moment there, he will uh, be a worried man. He's uh, down in third place. He's, uh, he has got uh, Peterson. 
up ahead of him in the, the race right now. And of course, the Nicholas for Hell, your race leader. And for Hell lying in that third position in the Masters Championship. We're back with our leader right now. Brady Liebenberg got the lead there by a, just under a second, 0.9 of a second over Sebastian Boyd. The top four cards all running 43s. Well, let's have a look here. Two tenths of a second difference between the top four cards. Two tenths of a second difference in their lap times. That's Bradley Lindbergh, Sebastian Boyd, Cristiano Morgado, and Joseph Altz. While well, seven laps remain, seven laps remain in the up. DD2 and DD2 Masters, first heat. Well, 15 laps of hard racing, serious concentration, and no room for any form of mistakes. There's the battle led, the front end of the Masters. Down to Gordini. Oh, it looks like Cap Peterson there. Peterson there. Having, it uh, looks like, problems there with Eugene Britz. Well, pointing fingers at each other as they exit the uh, Gordini term. So the, the battle is on for that second in the uh, race for the Masters right now. We're back there with the DD2. Well, they were released first. Uh, the bulk of the numbers there, DD2 drivers. Bradley Merck back in the chair after a two-year break from karting and dominating like he did back in the day. Two years back, this guy, Burrell ART driver back in the days, was unstoppable. Look at this battle lap. Jonathan Peterson, well, not able to hold on, not able to hold on to that second position in the Masters. Well, that seems Eugene Britt snip through. So Peterson will go down to 15th overall. Britt will move up to 14th overall. It is uh, Nicholas for Hale that leads the Masters. He's in 13th position. Cristiano Morgado, 3.1 seconds off the pace right now. He'll be very concerned about that. One, almost one and a half second gap from first to second. Bradley Levenberg on rails right now. Sebastian Boyd battling to find a way to not pass him but to hang with him. While the top four cards gone sub 44s, it's 43s now. And let's have a look at two tenths, two tenths of a second difference in the, their lap times. The top four cards. Wow, Liebenberg from Boyd, Mogado in third, Alts in fourth. Well, Nico Zipiris here running in that fifth place there from Brandon Smith. Uh, Kian Grottis in seventh, Nicholas Spanianis running in eighth, Jamie Smith in ninth, and Waylon Wyman making up the top ten in DD2 right now. And the battle of the DD2 Masters continues with Nick Verhale stamping his authority there in the 101 card. 13th place overall. He's now got Eugene Brits tagging him, looking for a way to the number one spot there. Eugene Brits in the 199 cart. And uh, third position at the moment in the Masters. Jonathan Peterson caught 169. Well, Brits is here, your championship leader in the, the Masters. And uh, he won't be enjoying uh, sitting behind Nicholas Vahel, who sits in third position in the championship. So three laps remain in the DD2 first heat here. Bradley Liebenberg over the line. 2.1 seconds, 2.1 seconds advantage. Over Sebastian Boyd in second place in the 69 card. Cristiano Mercado will we'll go back to the pits and be uh, pretty serious about trying to find 
why that cart is not delivering for him. He's back in third place. And at no stage of the race yet has he looked like uh, being able to hang with the two carts up ahead of him. Well, Joseph Olsay will be looking to uh, play catch up there and take on the top three slot there. He knows he's got uh, Cristiano Morgado ahead of him. Just uh, one and a half a second gap between them. There you see the Masters. They're getting it amongst the back markers there. And it's going to be a close finish. They're in the last lap right now. They're into the last lap. For Hale leads in the Masters. And he's not leading in the Masters anymore because Eugene Bridge has taken over the race lead. The championship leading man has gone into the uh, lead in the Masters. So back to second there for uh, Nick, Nick, Nick for Hale. Jonathan Peterson that hangs on to that third place in Masters. Fourth in Masters at the moment is Shane Foley and fifth is Alistair Bingay. So we're on the last lap. Jacob Black goes out there. Brad Liebenberg, uh, two and a half seconds up on Sebastian Boy, takes the win. Cristiano will finish in third place here, as I say, the world champion. They will not be happy with the, the way the cart delivered for him. There's the Masters all congratulating each other as they roll back in there. Well, that's the first taste of the Premier Class here today. They'll be back a little bit later on. Roll down there to the uh, DD2 winner, Bradley Lindbergh and cart number 12. And the winner in the Masters there, the uh, reigning points leader and championship leader, Eugene Brits, who took the win in, uh, in cart 199 in the Masters. I've got with me Eugene Brits. We're in his pit here during the lunch break. Um, I didn't catch him as he came off the track, but I'm sure that smile must have been priceless. <laughs> Um, Eugene is leading the national championship at the moment in the DD2 Masters class um, and it was a tough race with the DD2s on track um, and he had obviously Nick Verhale and Jonathan Peterser um, as, as a trio fighting it out in the front. Um, Eugene, tell us about Heat 1. Yeah, so Heat 1, I mean, I can't believe we actually won that one because the whole week we've been struggling. It just seems like the, the track came to us a little bit and the front two fell off. Uh, we were able to do consistent lap time. So I caught up slowly, started in fourth, third, second, and then Nick made a little mistake through Thunderdome and I was able to move up quite a bit there. And then, yeah, I just passed him with two laps to go and held on. But, yeah, happy. We need these wins. I think we only need a couple more than we basically secured the championship. So we'll see how it goes, yeah. Awesome. I saw Nick all over your bumper at turn one on last lap and I thought he was going to go for it. Yeah, I had to. <laughs> this, me and Nick have been racing so closely this whole year. Like I know if I'm in front, he's going to come and he knows if I'm there. I think I caught him a little bit by surprise, but then I just blocked the last, last few laps. So yeah. it was good. Well, that's the person who makes the least mistakes, eh? Well, yeah. John Consistency, Consistency yeah. is key. Jonathan Peterson, local boy. How threatening is he? Oh, so quick today. I mean, even yesterday, you can see he's so comfortable here. From lap two, three, they get their pace on and they know what to do here. So we've been struggling a little bit to find the right setup, but it feels like maybe now the, the different rubber is cleared up and the track comes come to us a bit now. So, okay. yeah, looking forward to the rest. And the heat's out there. I mean, it's a, it's a warm winter's day in, in uh, Camperdown. Yeah, and especially this is one of the most physical tracks. So, uh, I, I don't know. Like, um, I can still, I, I feel okay. I'll just go get a Red Bull now or something and carry on. <laughs> Hydrate water, water, Eugene. <laughs> no water, caffeine. <laughs> <laughs> well, all the very best. The sodi's looking good. You're looking smooth. Um, you like you say, the, the pressure could possibly come off yeah. um, after this national. Exactly. Yeah, so if... Uh, we basically everybody sort of focus on tomorrow for that one ticket but uh, our goal here is just to get as many heat wins as possible to make the last round as comfortable as possible so yeah so far so good yeah we wish you well thank all you the best thank thank you. You. i've got bradley liebenberg here he's a dd2 racer and he is an out of towner but man he has shown us his driving skill today he has uh, got uh, cristiano magado chasing him down he cristiano five-time world champ and uh, bradley you just you just put your nose in front and just stuck there. I mean, what a phenomenal race. Uh, rate your Dubai National so far. 
Oh, right now it's a 10 out of 10. Um, yeah, obviously it was a good race. Uh, it's still early days. Obviously it's the first race of the weekend. For us more, it's about tomorrow at the African Open. So, you know, today we can use it a little bit as a test session, which is quite lacquer. Um, but yeah, obviously having Chris in the field and a lot of other drivers, a lot of up and coming talents, like, it's always good to race against and to know that I haven't been in a cart for a while now and to get back in and still, still have the touch. So yeah, I mean, the, the day started off great and uh, hopefully we can keep the momentum going through the weekend. I, I, I honestly think you've got the special touch today. Um, we've got a big field, but it's not all DD2. It's the Masters joining you. Um, did you have to lap any of those, um, the Masters, the heavier category guys? Uh, I think there was one guy, but uh, obviously there's blue flags. He moved out the way quite, quite well. So, you know, it's, it's good driving from overall from the entire field. And, yeah, like I said, we look forward to the rest of the day. Hopefully, you know, it's some clean, good racing. And, uh, yeah, we'll see how the rest of the day goes. Fantastic. And what's your biggest challenge today, do you think? Uh, I think the circuit's going to evolve quite a bit. Obviously, we had the Rock National here last weekend. So, you know, there's different tyre compounds that have gone down. And uh, as the day goes on, obviously, the heat's come, come today. Yesterday, it wasn't as hot. And, uh, you yeah, for sure, I think the rubber's going to start coming down. So, we've got to keep on top of that and, uh, you know, ensure that we've got the best card possible for, for the rest of the day. Well, I'm sure your mechanics are all over it. And as the rubber comes down your cart won't be bogging and uh, just as a heads up it's going to be hotter tomorrow but all the very best for heat too. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well I'm here with Alistair Minge. Alistair is the club chairman at uh, Idube KZN Kart Club. He's also a dad of a driver in the Mini Max class, Travis Minge, who is currently coming third in the national standings but this is his home track so we're hoping for a good result. Um, and obviously he's in his kit, so you can see that Alistair is also a DD2 Masters driver. Um, Al, let's talk about Travis for a second in the Mini Max. Um, he's, he, he's qualified well in pole, uh, two thousandths of a second ahead of uh, his rival Udendal. And then um, Heat won, he, he lost in the last lap to, to Udendal. So what do you think happened? How are you feeling about it? I think it's fantastic racing. Eh? I think at the end of the day, if you're looking at, a, at eight or nine people that are within two tenths of a second, it's the racing that we're looking for. You want to have great, good, clean racing. And, uh, and the race was good. It was a really great race. Right to the end, he was there. And uh, I think he just, uh, just got overtaken by somebody with a good brakes and uh, good race craft. I think it was nice to see. But hopefully next one he can pull it together. Eh? <laughs> I was going to say, that was spoken like the chairman. Now like the dad, please. <laughs> I can't swear. No, <laughs> no, no. no look, I'm, I'm happy. I think Trav did very well. I think the next one he's going to really have to pull it out. But uh, yeah, let's see what happens. Eh? He's in second, so it'll be a different, uh, a different one to come from because he's not often in second from here, normally in pole. But uh, he'll figure it out. He'll figure it out, yeah. yeah. We are, we are hopeful. We are hopeful for the local boy. Um, and your racing, how's it going in the Masters class? Yeah, look, I think uh, to all the Cape Town and Joburg guys that didn't come, I think uh, we need to try and pull our finger for the next one because uh, otherwise the series like us does. I mean, we, we rely on the numbers. Um, if you have numbers, the series becomes more attractive. And uh, it's just a pity that we didn't get all the numbers that we wanted this time. But yeah. the quality is phenomenal. I mean, to have six or seven go drivers like that, it's unbelievable, but really enjoyable. Yeah. It must be pretty special though, being on the track with the likes of Jonathan Peterson, local boy, but the Nick Verhoels, Eugene Brits, and then you, you combined with the DD2s now, so you've got Christiana Magado in the DD2, Sebastian um, Bradley Liebenberg, I mean, these are super big names, so it must be exciting for you to be on the track with them. Yeah, if I can keep up with them and maybe have a chance at passing them, it's even more exciting. But yeah, absolutely. Now we're very lucky to have such a good field. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for your time. All the best for Heat 2. I've got with me Cristiano Magado, which is a, quite an honor. He's a five-time world champ, um, and he's racing DD2 today. An interesting choice, Cristiano. Um, DD2 today, DD2 Masters tomorrow, I believe. Can you tell us what the thought plan is behind that decision? Oh, I mean, it's just because the, you know, I just wanted to mix it up with the drivers in the, in the DD2 and just get that experience in and then maybe switch over tomorrow and, and race with different guys. So it's almost like, um, you know, getting, getting a taste of both. So it's more fun. Okay. And it's all about fun. 
the DD2s are, are combined with the Masters today. Um, I know there was a back marker. Did you have to pass anybody out there? Uh, no, I mean, I actually got past. I started second and finished third. Uh, so it was quite a, a pretty quiet race. Uh, they had a gap behind me, so there, it wasn't too exciting. It was just a bring it home, and it was not too much action. Okay. Who's your biggest competitor? I interviewed Bradley Liedemannberg earlier. He's looking very smooth out there. Um, he doesn't know the track as well as you, I suppose, but, um, he, yeah, his cart is on, on point. Yeah, for sure, going very well, and but not just him. Uh, there's about, I think, six guys that are going very well. So as the conditions change, like one of them might creep up and, and things change around, uh, so it should be fun. Yeah. You're used to the warmer temp tracks um, here at Idube, and it's going to be warmer tomorrow. Um, you're obviously going to keep that in mind, and it's you and your dad as a mechanic, yeah? So um, have you got any... I don't know, tricks up your sleeve for heat two, or are you just going to um, test it out for the rest of the day? Um, no, there's definitely things I need to change. Uh, I was, it wasn't the best setup for the conditions because it, it got a bit sunny and all, so it didn't really work for my setup. So I got, to, I do have a few things to change. So I'm going to change, and then you never know if it works out. But uh, I have an idea what I need to do. So hopefully the next race it'll be feeling a bit better. Well, you're really experienced, you know what you're doing. If you've got changes to make, I'm not going to keep you. But thanks very much for your time and all the best. Appreciate it. Thank you. Like everybody's happy. There is the DD2 uh, getting the start. It's a the getaway is nice. Clean start there from Bradley Liebenberg. Liebenberg gets a start and a great start there. Moving his position and watch the Masters. The man to watch there will be uh, in the... Uh, 199 caught Eugene Brits. He took the win in race one. Down into DT corner. There you see uh, Bradley Limburg got the lead. Cristiano Morgado back in that to third place there behind Joseph Oles. Very late on the brakes. I did see them making adjustments to the, uh, the brake balance. Down on the pits there, there was, uh, was getting more braking from the back calipers than the front. They just balanced the balance, got the balance right there. So you can see Cristiano Morgado able to stop that cart a lot quicker and later. Out the back straight away they go. All right, so there we are. They come up the hill out of DT corner. Bradley Liebenberg. Doing an amazing job there, keeping a boy back in second. Jamie Smith. Another one of the Pirol ART cots. Finds his way into third. Joseph Olsen to fourth and Cristiano Morgado dropping down the order. He's down in first position right now. Clearly things are not going good there in the in the uh, Morgado camp. Well, they're looking at the uh, DD2 there, I can tell you. 13th position overall, but uh, your leading masters is Nicholas Verhale on the 101 card. Jonathan Peterson in the uh, 169 card finds himself in second place. And uh, Eugene Britz running in third. Shane Foley's got himself in fourth ahead of Alistair Minge and uh, Andrew Thomas. That's the uh, positions right now in the masters. Bradley Lindbergh goes purple there with a 44036 at the uh, front of the base. Well, one long train headed down the intermediate straight away. Lindbergh with a point two, a point two of a second there, advantage over Sebastian Boyd. As they roll it over the line. Boyd holds off for Jamie Smith in 33. Joseph Holtz holding that fourth place. Morgado still in fifth. Nicholas Spanianis in sixth. Brandon Smith in that seventh, eighth place. Nico Zafiris, ninth place there. Keon Grottis and tenth place. Wayne Wyman. 
and the battle down beyond and for the Masters. Nicholas for Hale holds on to the lead. The 101 caught there leading the Masters. Jonathan Peterson in the vertex uh, auto entered. Uh, Tony caught there sitting in second place. Caught 169 and Eugene in the Brits in the 199 caught sitting in that third position. Well, Brits there leads the, the Masters uh, Championship. For, and uh, won't be happy with that. Uh, sitting in third position in the Masters right now. Brits taking the win in the Masters in race one. Sitting in third position right now in race two. There he goes, a challenge. Ah, here we go. Sebastian Boyd makes the move. Well, leaving the door wide open there. Bradley Lindbergh. A very rare mistake from Brad there. Well, I think uh, it's fair enough to say that Lieberberg was just uh, too slow going into DT corner and left far too much room. So Sebastian Boyd picked up the, uh, the offer, took the offer and uh, has obliged by putting the uh, 69 cart up front. Leads race two in the DT2s. Here they come back into action. Lieberberg back to second. Jamie Smith looks now. He has a little look. Well, time to return to pay. Well, Jamie Smith, new second place man. And while well, at Lieberberg on the grass. And got to be said, chances out the window. Put a wheel on the dirt out of DT corner. Your chances of finding a win are gone. So Boyd leads Lieberberg. What right down the order. Joseph Olsen to second, back to third for Cristiano Morgado. Nicholas Spaniano sent to fourth. Nicholas Alfieres picks up foot and in sixth position. The three caught there, Brandon Smith. Lindenberg down in seventh position right now. Oh, that's Cristiano Morgado with a broken exhaust pipe. Morgado. Well, the there you can see shifting, short shifting that card. He knows that this uh, might be a problem. This is going to rob him of a... Certainly going to rob him of a talk. The low down performance there, gone out the window with that pop. Zardes jumped off the manifold or it's uh, cracked at the connection with the barrel. What well, is this an opportunity for Nicholas Spanianis to pick up on to that third place? Five time world champion, Cristiano Morgado in trouble right now. Well, Cristiano Morgado will be scratching his head and wondering what else is going to go wrong with the cart. It just has been a struggle to get the, the perfect balance. The perfect setup on that card, just when one thing is not corrected, another thing goes wrong right now, in trouble with a cracked or broken exhaust. And here comes the battle on for fourth position right now. Nicholas Spadiano said, fighting with Nicholas Zephyrus for that fourth place, the 63 and 70 cards. We go down once again there to the, uh, the Masters. Nicholas Verhale leads and the 101 card con continues to lead. Well, a new second place man and Eugene Brits. He's taken on that second place. That's pushed uh, Jonathan Peterson down to third in card 169. Shane Foley holds on that fourth, fifth place. Is Alice Domingue and Andrew Thomas holds that sixth position in the Masters. A great battle there. Well, we look at the difference there. Just one tenth. Uh, it's one, just over a second. Just over a second separating Nicholas Verhale in card 101 and Eugene Britson in card 199. In the battle for supremacy in the DD2 Masters. Four laps remain. Oh, 
while Sebastian Boy, the ACL leader, is headed down to DT Corner. Well, can uh, Cristiano Ogado stay off the challenge of uh, Nicholas Panianis in card 63 and Nico Zipar is the superior in card 7-0. They are really pushing hard. The fight is on for fourth and uh, they are closing up on third place. Cristiano Ogado in all sorts of trouble with a uh, broken exhaust on, in that uh, 37 card running in third place right now. Three laps remain. Three laps remain. Well, I don't know if he's going to hold on to it because he's got four cards chasing him down. Cristiano Morgado, Nick Spanianis, Nico Zafiris, Brandon Smith and Bradley Lindbergh all knowing that uh, the world champion is in trouble and uh, losing out. Paiseri is now being caught by the uh, Burrell ART there of... Uh, Nicholas Spanianis, the 63 card. Two laps remain when they come through. Next time they'll spot the last lap board. Well, it's just a possibility that uh, Cristiano Morgado is going to fight his way through to keep that top three slot. In that A-ring cart, the 37 cart there, the last lap board is out. They're on their last lap right now. Just 2.2 of a second separate first to second. There's the battle there for third. Cristiano Morgado holding on, fighting to hold on to that third position with a broken exhaust. Not enjoying life. There he looks back and that's the first time I've ever seen the world champion look back at what's going down behind him. Is he going to be caught? I don't think he's going to be caught. This guy has uh, just too far too much experience to uh, throw away a top three finish. Well, there he is. It's uh, third in race one. Looks like he's going to find third again in race two. The leaders come up to cross the line. Sebastian Boyd takes the win. Joseph Olsen second. And... Uh, Cristiano Morgado takes third. Fourth place, Nicholas Vanianas from Nico Zafiris, Brad Liebenberg. All right, we look at the Masters there. Well, it was a great battle there. Nick for hell. 101 caught there. Eventually running away there with the win there in the Masters there. From uh, Eugene Brits, who did a great job uh, fighting off Jonathan Peterson to move into second there. Third place there, going to Jonathan Peterson. Fourth place into Shane Foley. And uh, it's, uh, that's your top three in the Masters there. Alice Domingo taking fifth, sixth place to Andrew Thomas. I've got Sebastian Boyd with me. He's a DD2 carter. Um, I've, we're familiar with each other from Benoni, the Formula K track. He got a first, first and first, and he's here down in Idube. And he too, he's done the same thing. Can you tell us how your day is going? How was Heat 1 and Heat 2? Yeah, Heat 1, we banked the second, which is not bad, because Brad won and he's not in the championship. So we got good points in heat one. Heat two, we were behind Brad, made a good pass into Kangaroo, and then Ulls had good pace behind, so I had to just manage the gap, and then we managed to do so. Yes, I saw that. You and Ulls, um, he, he was close in some parts, and then you left him in other parts of the track. Where do you think your strength is? Yeah, um, from what I saw was our strength thundered him. We obviously opened the gap a little bit there going onto the straight, which was good enough to hold it up the hill, because he was very strong up the hill. Yes. Okay, yeah, that's exactly what we were seeing. Um, do you know what's happening with the action behind you or are you focused completely on your race and, and an error-free lap time? Yeah, obviously with the track with so many twisties you can obviously look behind a bit. Um, heat 1 there was a massive gap and I obviously saw Jamie in the wall so that was unfortunate. Then this race again there was quite a big gap and I saw Jamie come into the pits I think or pull over or whatever so obviously he's had a bad day and there's been a lot of drama behind. Yeah, yeah I'm going to catch up with Jamie now. Um, I'm not sure he's too keen to talk to me, but yeah, he's had a bad day. He bogged coming out of uh, Kangaroo, you call it, at DT Corner, um, and he stopped. So yeah, we're going to have a, a word with him. But thanks for your time and all the best for Heat 3. Cool, thanks. Right, I've got Nick Verhurl with me. He's a DD2 Masters class driver. 
Um, doing exceptionally well here on our twisty, turny Dubai track. Tell us about your heat one and two, Nick. Um, yeah, heat one was fantastic. All was going to plan, just taking it easy, looking after the tyres. And then a little gremlin crept in with a gear change. And I nearly had a huge off there at Thunderdome. Um, the, gear went, the cart went into neutral and I tried to grab a gear and then I nearly crashed. So I was happy to finish second in that heat. Yeah, Eugene um, said you made a mistake. It's good to know the truth. Yeah, you know, it was a mistake, a big one, but I managed to save it. So second place will work for me with that. Luckily, we didn't end up in the tires. Um, and then this heat, same thing. Sorry to interrupt. Just for, so the viewers know, Thunderdome is our fastest corner on the track. And if you don't get a good exit out of there, it, it costs you all the way up the back straight. So it's important to get Thunderdome right no, and not land up in the tires. No, exactly. And also the tires are very close. And I think they're like 100 years old, so they're extremely hard. <laughs> so we apologize. We, <laughs> so I know from experience, those tires bite. So very lucky to walk away with that one. Um, so second place, I'll take that. You know, I don't like finishing second, but <laughs> that'll work. And now it's Eugene's turn to finish second. So tell us about heat two. So yeah, heat two, same thing. Went to plan, everything was going to plan. Just kept the pace. Didn't want to catch the, the DD2s too quickly. Um, so I was also just controlling the pace, trying to look after the tires for the last heat. Because now it's going to be a repeat of FK. Yes, <laughs> yes. One win each and the winner takes all in the last. So yeah, I hope that hopefully this time is mine. I feel very confident here. I like this track. Yeah. You've always performed well here at Iduve. We wish you all the best. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank cool. Thank Four, zero, zero, six. We look at the Masters there. What's going on down in the Masters? Well, that's Nicholas for Hale. That uh, looks like uh, he's going to be the man to beat today. The 101 cop there, Nick Verhale there, leads the Masters there from uh, Eugene Britz there in the 199 cart. Well, Britz there, championship leader in the Masters. We won't be enjoying that, but we saw him there change things around there in race two. So, uh, for, for Hale leads the Masters there from Britz. Peterson running in third. Foley in fourth there, Minga in fifth, and that's uh, Andrew Thomas running sixth place. Masters there, close, still very open, anybody's race. We're back here with the DD2, down to a DT corner they go. Bradley Lindberg in the 12 cart there. Just uh, over three and a half tenths advantage over Sebastian Boyd in the Pirol ART. Joseph Hulse looking strong in cart number one. The reigning champion there, sitting in that third position. Cristiano Magada put down one for the season, down to fourth. And cart 37, Jamie Smith there. He goes purple, new parts of the lap of the race. Cart 33, a 43.938 there for uh, Jamie Smith. Brandon Smith there on his tail, pressing hard in three. Nico Zafiris there, seventh, eighth place there, Christus. Got the Wyman behind him and Nicholas Vaiton 10. No change there in the Masters there. So Nick Verhale leads the Masters in cart 101 from Eugene Bricks. Championship leader in the 199 cart in second place. And uh, I can tell you the very, very little separating the two. Well, that's in the third place there. Jonathan Peterson. In card 169, we'll want to try and improve on his uh, third position in uh, the Masters. He's got Shane Foley chasing him down. Shane Foley in the 135 card. The Brantford entry. Alice Mingo, another one of the Brantford entry. Cards in 101, sitting in that uh, fifth position in the Masters. We're back there with the, the DD2. Look how close this is. Bradley Smith there. Well, now just under half a second separating first and second. So Brad Liebenberg coming under fire from uh, Sebastian Boyd and Cott, 69. Joseph Holtz, the reigning uh, DD2 champion, holds on third. Well, Mogado doesn't look like he's got the answers there to run a top three out in the final just yet. Jamie Smith there, Cott, 33, just showed uh, a far new fastest lap of the race, 
Well, there you see uh, Morgado tucked in behind. Joseph Holtz, that little uh, breakaway ahead of him is the one and two cards out there. Liebenberg and Boyd. A bit of a gap there to the reigning champion, Holtz, Morgado and Smith. Unbelievable, Bradley Liebenberg, two years out of karting, comes back and he hasn't done a thing wrong all day. He's been absolutely on rails. Super disciplined driver. That's a multiple SA champ. Loads of international experience. Cody Lindbergh there, dead, watching from the sidelines. A master technician himself certainly knows how to set up and prepare a race cart. Well, mate, would have made sure that uh, Bradley Lindbergh has nothing but the best equipment to go racing with today. Although uh, Cody, Cody Lindbergh tells me more, more of their focus is on the All Africa Open tomorrow. That's the one that they want to win. But he's done, he looking very, very strong at the moment. Well, as they race up and cross over the line. Well, the gap from first to second, 0.7. That's uh, just under, well, just over half a second. The gap between uh, first and second place, Bradley Lindbergh over Sebastian Boyd. It's almost getting to a situation where I think uh, Boyd will be more focused on keeping Alts back in third, Morgado and Smith behind him. He knows he's got uh, a lot, a lot of quality, including a world champion behind it. He will not uh, lie down and play dead just yet. Liebenberg pretty much, I think, is going, running this race from the front, controlling. Sebastian Boyd. Dropping off the pace now. Well, I wonder if these tires are going off where he feels he uh, don't want to be taking any chances here because he has now got the reigning DD2 champion on his case. Behind him, Cristiano Morgan and Jamie Smith. We're back there with the Masters. Nick Verhale there. Leads the Masters there in Cop 101. Eugene Brits there on his case there. The championship leader. The 199 cart holding second place there in the DD2 Masters. Jonathan Peterson keeping it in the top three. The 169 card, Jonathan Peterson third. Your top three in Masters right now. Just out of the top three, Shane Foley in 135, Alistair Mingay in 104, and Andrew Thomas in the 114 card. Well, two laps to go. Next time around, I'll pick up on that last lap board. Bradley Lindbergh will be sensing victory right here and now. Although I don't want to offer a commentator's curse. Bradley Lindbergh just got to keep that cart on the black stuff there. Hope uh, he doesn't get any pops or misses or any uh, problems with the cart. Between now and the check it flag. Right, so here we go, last lap board, one to go for the man crossing the line now. There's a very worried Savikin, DD2 champion in second place, Joseph Holt. Cristiano Morcado has found his way to third. Jamie Smith drops to fourth there. Let's have focus on this here. Are we going to see a last uh, lap charge from five times world champion Cristiano Morcado? He goes down the inside there of Joseph Holt. They're DD2 champion. Just half a lap to go. Up the hill they go. Liebenberg got this one in the bag. 
Who's going to take second place? I'll send the fire there from that hard charging Cristiano Morgano. Round that is in the other hockey stick. Jacob Blake goes out. Lieberberg takes the win. One cart leg separating second. Joseph Holtz, the DD2 champion, just holds on to second place. Cristiano Morgano found that little ounce of power there to charge in that last lap to put the pressure on Holtz to take third place. Jamie Smith home and fourth. Sebastian Boyd will take fifth. Nico Zafiris in sixth there. Brandon Smith in seventh. Ken Kian Gratis at eight. Ninth, Nicholas Manianis at 10th place. Waylon Wyman. I got Joseph Ulls with me. He's cart number one in a DD2. You don't just choose number one for your cart in DD2. Joseph, is, uh, he's been around, he's experienced, he's been here a few times. He knows our track and he's a smooth, smooth competitor. But today's been a bit of a mixed bag for you. Joseph, um, nice final result. But t take us through your whole Idube National. Yeah, look, we started off, unfortunately, on the back foot going uh, into this weekend. The cart really, it really wasn't sticking to the track um, and yeah, there were a lot of setup changes we had to make. Um, but yeah, overall, I'm extremely chuffed with the result. Uh, to be honest, I didn't expect to end up second. Um, but yeah, I drove with the mentality of just, you know, give it your best and, you know, sort of it is what it is. Um, and yeah, I, I can only thank my team for the amazing comeback. Um, and uh, yeah, we're we slowly getting there, slowly but surely. So, I mean, hopefully tomorrow for the African Open we'll find a bit of pace, but there is still pace to find. Um, yeah, we obviously want to get back to winning ways. It's a pity we weren't able to win today, but um, yeah, we'll try and come back stronger tomorrow. Okay, as far as conditions go, today was unusually hot for a Durban winter. But tomorrow's going to be even warmer. Now with the rubber laid down already and the hotter conditions, uh, you got any special plans to uh, release your cart around the track tomorrow? Well, uh, I'd hope the team have something in mind. But uh, yeah, we'll definitely have to adapt um, and change the cart specifically for the track. The track is constantly evolving. So yeah, I mean, we've just got to stay on top of our game. And um, yeah, we'll see what happens tomorrow. Okay. Well, Joseph, well done. Um, very impressive, a fourth, a third, a second. Uh, Africa Open where it counts tomorrow. Let's hope it's at number one, at P1. Congratulations, Thank well you. done. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. There is no feeling like winning. The glory, the emotion, the memories. Okay, guys, um, just a big thanks to everybody for coming today. I think it's quite a unique event to have the, the National and the Africa Open two days in a row. So a big uh, hand for all of you for coming today and uh, representing yourself. I think uh, karting is going through some very difficult times. Obviously there's lots of politics involved in that. So every single one of you arriving here today representing the sport and uh, putting the drivers first, that's uh, what counts. And I think everyone must just keep on doing that. We just make a big thing of uh, getting to every event, keeping the classes alive, and making good racing for everyone. Cheers. DD2 Masters. In sixth position, Jonathan Peterson. In first position, Andrew Thomas. Fourth position, the DD2 Masters, Alice Domingue. Our KZN Karting Chairman. We go to the top three DD2 Masters drivers today. And in third position, he'll be smiling at the Brantford entry there. Let's hear it for Shane Foley. Top three finish in DD2 Masters. We go to second place here in the 101 court there. A big name in South Africa when it comes to karting. Well done, Nicholas Vahel taking that second spot. Gave us a good enough reason as to why he is the pace setter, the championship leader in the Masters for DD2. 
Please, please give it up for your winner, Eugene Brits. Please give up your winner, Bradley Wimbledon! 